we are going to take a brief look at the scientific method, more specifically the experimental design. So in the scientific method, we know there's a series of steps that we follow, an observation, forming our hypothesis, designing our experiment, collecting and analyzing our data, forming our conclusion, and then retesting. And we'll look at each of these steps individually. First, our observation. So observations are gathered from the natural world. So scientists may notice something, for example, or decide to study something specific. Some of these are just observations that we notice, and some of them are goals or tasks that we're trying to complete, like maybe trying to find a cure for a certain disease. These are always gathered through our senses. So maybe we're making some observations, or noticing something around the world, maybe even it's a need. So let's do a simple, almost silly example. So maybe we notice that salamanders, or many of them near a certain pond, have curved tails instead of straight tails. So we'll use this example throughout. So now we need to form our hypothesis. So hypothesis is a suggested solution to a problem. So think about our salamanders and what might be the suggested solution. A hypothesis must be testable. So it's not something we can just make a simple statement. We have to be able to test that statement to see if there is a relationship, a cause and effect. Sometimes a hypothesis is written as an if-then statement, but not always. But when we're first starting out and writing a hypothesis, sometimes it's easier to write an if-then statement. Bottom line, a hypothesis will predict the experimental outcome. It does not have to be correct. It doesn't matter if the hypothesis, hypothesis is right or wrong, but it does predict the outcome of this particular experiment. So maybe our hypothesis for our salamanders is that those salamanders have curved tails due to the pollutant in the soil where they live. So we're predicting why they would have that curved tail versus the straight tail. So it's time to design our experiment. So experimental design is really important here. There are multiple factors to an experiment. The experiment itself is going to be a procedure that we use to test our hypothesis. And in that experiment, we're going to have multiple factors. A variable is an important factor in the experiment that's being tested. We looked at this as an independent variable, or the factor that we changed in our experiment. Valid experiments have just one variable, so we can ensure that that variable is what is causing the result. If we have more than one variable, then we can't prove that one specific variable or factor has caused the result. So as we are running our experiment, we are looking at that one factor that has been changed and then making observations and measurements to see what impact that will have or what results. So as we look at specific variables, the factor that is going to be changed, as we said, is called the independent variable. This is what I am changing in my experiment. So think of our brine shrimp lab. What did we specifically change in our brine shrimp lab to look at our results? The factors that are measured or observed, our results, will be our dependent variable. So again, think of our brine shrimp lab and also what would be our dependent variable. 